Please be seated. The court is now back in session. The prosecution will take the floor again to put questions to the witness. Witness, you are reminded to only provide the information that you yourself knew of, experienced, or observed. Please try not to provide a conclusion or a guess based on your personal understanding and it, as it does not have any legal weight in the court. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. North Pang. When we were looking at that last document that was addressed to respected Comrade Dawn, you said that these matters, the distribution of materials, were related to the office and that that's why they were sent to the Dawn. I'd like to show you another document that mentions Comrade Dawn and see if that may assist in elucidating further Comrade Dawn's position. Your Honours, uh, this is document D200-9. Dot seven. It's an attachment to the second record of interview. So, deal with me. Defence Counsel, you may proceed. Merci de me Thank you for giving me the floor, Mr. President. I am somewhat surprised at the prosecutor's method, the method he used a while ago. He has just said that uh, the witness has just said he didn't know the role of Dun, and the prosecutor is uh, asking this question as if he did not know the exact role of Dun, and he continues to show the witness documents to elicit from the witness some assumptions on the role of Dun. May we remind the witness, Mr. President, this afternoon that the witness is here to testify as to what he knew at the time and what he can recall today. And in this regard, I wonder why the prosecutor is adopting this approach persisting in asking the witness what the functions of June were, continuing to show the witness documents to make the witness uh, offer assumptions as to what Mr. June's role was. There are other witnesses who may shed light on the role of Dune, and this witness before us is not in a position to tell us what the role of Mr. June was. So this question that has just been put to the witness by the prosecutor is rather leading, and I object to it. Mr. President, if I may respond briefly, um, it is not correct to say that the witness has no knowledge whatsoever of Comrade Dorn. If I can remind the court, it was in his OCIJ statement that the witness described Dorn who an, as an individual who may have been the chairman of an office working with Nguyen Chia or Q San Pan. Those were the witness's words. They, one assumes, came from his knowledge. 
Um, he has also stated further that uh, he understood Duan to be tasked with matters relating to the distribution of materials, and that's why this document that we were looking at before was sent to Duan. So what you have, Your Honours, is a, a base of knowledge about this individual um, that the witness has given us, and it is in my submissions entirely appropriate to explore further what the witness knows uh, and to see whether documents may refresh his memory. Now, the witness has just been reminded that he should not speculate, and with that instruction, uh, I think it is entirely appropriate to proceed, and if the witness does not have direct knowledge, if the documents do not assist him, he can simply say, I don't wish to speculate um, because I have no further personal knowledge. Um, to be attempting to block uh, my examination before the witness has been asked a question um, is entirely improper and premature. Very briefly, Mr. President, it would appear that the written answer of the witness uh, given when he was questioned by the co-investigating judges was already at the time an answer to a suggestion because if you read that answer, you would find that the witness did say it was perhaps this or that or perhaps this or that. Now the prosecutor is trying to make us believe that his answer was clear, whereas that was not the case. It appears that already in 2009, um, the answer may have been evasive, but the witness did say that he did not know. This counsel, you should make it brief, and I just want to see how uh, you feel regarding the uh, proceeding and the procedure applicable before this chamber, usually you are only allowed to object once, once only. Defense counsel, Michael Canavas, you may proceed and please try to raise the new point rather than the old points raised by other defense counsel, since the old points have already been replied by the prosecution. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I'll, I'll try to be brief. Uh, the prosecution began its questioning by trying to suggest to the witness that by showing him a series of documents, they would be able to somehow work, work out what Dune did. Now, uh, the prosecution mentioned what he said in his first statement, but then again in his second statement, again, the witness said, when, when asked about Dune, I have no grasp. Perhaps, perhaps he was working in the working group at Office 870. That's the best of his knowledge at the time when, it was, when he was speaking to the investigators. Now, for the prosecution to try to attempt to construct some sort of knowledge by showing him documents is improper. And as my colleague indicated, there are other witnesses can, who can designate or who can tell us who Dune was. This is not one of them. Thank you. Thank you, Council. The Chamber also took note of this issue before the lunch break. For that reason, when we resumed, the Chamber immediately reminded the witness because the witness made a personal conclusion in his response, and at that time, the defense, no, none of the defense counsel actually stood and objected to his uh, witness, to his uh, response. And the prosecution, the prosecution has the right to put questions to the witness, but it is the witness's duty not to provide a guesstimation guesti of a conclusion only his personal experience or personal observation or knowledge shall be provided in his response. Otherwise, due to your service, Mr. Witness, you will be bombarded with hundreds of questions that would impede you. Mr. President, um, I think in my learned friend 
Michael Akarnavis' uh, objections is in part the answer to this issue. The witness used the name Dawn. The Chamber already ruled that you can put your question. It is the duty of the witness either to respond to your question or not. Thank you, Mr. President. I, mis I misunderstood the, the position. Um, the document that I wish to show the witness is a document he discussed with the investigators. It is D200-9.7. Uh, it is a, min a minute of, the, of a meeting of the Standing Committee dated the 9th of October 1975. Uh, with your permission, I'll give the witness a hard copy. Yes, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Mr. Sopang, if you look uh, over the page, this should be on the second page of your version, and I will give the relevant ERNs. In Khmer 0019109, in French 00292869, and in English 00183, Three, nine, three. If you look at that page, Mr. Sopang, I want to ask you about one line in particular under number eight. We have Comrade Dawn, Chairman, Political Office of 870. Now, based on your knowledge at the time and without speculating, could you please tell us whether that position corresponds with your knowledge or understanding of Duan's role and position? But I informed the Judicial officers, including the investigators, the only investigator in the state, that I did not know who Dun was. And regarding the appointment by the standing committee to be in charge of a certain office or whatever, it was beyond my knowledge. Thank you. If I can move on from Duan and ask you some questions about the activities of Mr. Q Sampan before we return to more examples of telegrams. I'm going to read this brief passage first in the interest of time and then ask you some questions about it. Your Honours, this is in the first statement, which is document D, apologies, E3 slash 64. And the relevant ERNs are in Khmer 0032-8033, in French 0041-701-702, and in English 0033-052. Mr. Sopang, this is the passage I wish to read to you. Question. 
what about Q Sampan? Answer, there used to be his messages which talked about what amount of salt, rice grain, cloth, clothing, shoes, and other materials to be sent to this and that unit for distribution to the people. He was the manager who managed and distributed various produced materials to the people. I did not receive messages from Q Sampan frequently. Besides that, I used to translate Q Sampan message in the form of directive circulars regarding various national ceremonies, for example, full stop. Is that an accurate summary of your description of Mr. Q Sampan's role at the time. Yes, that is correct. I want to read another brief passage um, further down on the same, uh, in the same section of your statement. where you said the following. As for Q Sampan, he sent messages in handwriting through the K1 messengers, whose chairman was Sam. Sam then delivered Q Sampan messages to K1. Sometimes, Q Sampan phoned me and had me take note of his text on phone and he told me where to send that message. That text was then to be coded and then was transmitted. Is that also a correct summary of what you said to the investigators? Yes, that is correct. I used to receive messages from Q Sampan through some group, which were the messengers group. And sometimes he phoned me. When Mr. Q Sampan sent these messages using K1 messengers, do you know from which location he was, he was sending them? No, I did not know that. In the same statement, a little bit further down, and this is at Khmer ERN 00328035, French 00411703, and English 00334053, you will ask the following question. Did you ever receive any direct phone calls from the zone committee asking for an appointment? Answer, no, my phone line was connected to three places only, included Q Sampan, Yo, and K1. Is that correct? Is that a correct summary of your statement? Mr. Sapang, that you had a phone line connection to only three places, Mr. Q Sampan, Yo, and K1. Yes, that is correct. 
Yes, that is correct. Do you know why it was necessary for there to be a phone line between your office and the office of Mr. Q Sampam? Usually, telegrams and if it is in the form of a handwriting from him or if the message is, was not clear or if a certain form has to be complied for certain messages to be sent he himself or his working group would give a phone call to me to give such instructions. So it means to facilitate the smoothness of the work. When Mr. Q Sampong delivered these messages to your office to be um, transmitted, were they coded by you and your staff before being transmitted? The content of the messages were similar to a normal letter and it was already typed. Our task was to encrypt that letter of text. And can I ask whether you also decoded any messages that were addressed to Mr. Q Sampan from the provinces or from the zones. Regarding as to whom the messages shall be sent to. I already uh, informed you earlier that I would act upon the instructions of Mr. Pond, who was my supervisor. So I would just act following that instruction from Pond. Were there any messages that were addressed to Mr. Q Sampan in the first line, or was it the case that messages would be, copies would be sent to him as directed by Pon? did not know and I did not see it. I did not, I never received instruction from Pon that I should copy the letter or message to kill some Pon. Now, st uh, staying with Mr. Q Sampan for another couple of minutes, you discussed his responsibilities in your second statement, and I want to read that passage to you. Your Honours, this is E3 slash 67. The Khmer ERN is 
00294538, French 00374935, and English 00483966. And this is what you said according to the statement. <clears throat> Quote, as for Q San Pan, he was in charge of the front and the government, i.e. contacting Samdek Sihanouk, meeting with foreign guests who came by the state invitation, dividing other materials to the various bases and zones. Telegram was not copied to Q Sampan. My understanding is that Pol Pot might call him to meet personally. Now, I want to proceed carefully in light of the Chamber's instructions. Um, so, I don't want you to speculate on this, but. Let me ask you first, is that a correct summary of what you said to the investigators? Response. The first part of the statement is correct to be the event that I saw and witnessed and I also noted the work uh, concerning the communication between Mr. Kilsampon and my section because he was in charge of the front and the government's tasks in distributing materials. And when I said I presumed it is really obviously clear that I was not sure on that and the investigators kept dwelling on the thing that I said I was not clear so I don't know and again at the beginning the first portion of my statement it's really clearly representing the accurate statement of mine thank you uh, given that you've said that you have no further direct knowledge of that issue, I won't, I won't ask you uh, additional questions on it. As we were discussing that um, minute of the Standing Committee uh, of the 9th of October 1975, few moments ago. Um, I want to just look at one brief passage which you have discussed with the investigators um, and see if you can confirm for us your understanding. So this is document D200-9.7 and the relevant ERNs are Khmer 00019-1. One 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 French zero zero two nine two eight seven two and English zero zero one eight three three nine four and this passage which deals with administrative matters uh, in one part says the following when a telegram comes in immediately when it is received the office must hand it to the responsible section immediately so they can examine and consider it and make proposals to the standing committee some matters are urgent Military matters are given to the military, commerce matters to commerce, party matters to the party section. Therefore, if we move closer together, 
This will facilitate concentrating our workforce. When you were looking at that document, Mr. Nonsepang, in your second statement, you indicated that it was uh, that it reflected the uh, instructions that you had um, received from Pon. Um, is that correct? That this was reflective generally of the way that your office was functioning. Response. The content of this statement relates to the regime of work, for example, the work that had to be done in accordance with the Standing Committee. It is true that uh, communication had to be done immediately, expeditiously. And I already indicated uh, when I had to decode the text and when the text had to be sent out immediately and on a timely manner because I had to make sure that the, message, uh, the messages were sent to PON section immediately so that they could be then properly managed uh, from there. Texts that were relevant to the military would be uh, managed and sent to the commerce and so on and so forth. Yeah. Thank you. And while we're on the military, um, was it the case that the military communicated with the party centre using K18 uh, and your decoding office, or did they communicate in some other way? Response. What I know is that the military communication and what I saw was that uh, the message uh, would be sent uh, through K-18. Who then sent uh, to the telegram decoding section? I have no knowledge of how um, the message would be uh, communicated apart from that. Thank you. And now, coming back to uh, some examples of telegrams, um, perhaps uh, we can do this relatively quickly. I'll ask you um, only perhaps two or three questions per telegram. Um, Your Honours, this is document E3 slash 871. E3 slash 871. It is another telegram and it is dated the 21st of March. Appears to be 1976, but perhaps we can ask the witness. For more details, with your leave, I'll give him a hard copy. The President, you may proceed. Court officer, you now instructed to bring the hard copy to the witness for examination. And perhaps it can be shown on the screen also for everyone else. Um, Mr. Sapang, this is. Um, another telegram. Now, I acknowledge the copy is uh, not of a very good quality, um, but I just want to see if we can look at a couple of details in it. The date towards the bottom is 21 March, 
and below that we, we see um, that it is authored by Chon and then below that we have the copy two line and we see Brother Norn, Brother Kiev, Brother Van, Office and Archive. Now we've looked at all of these individual ex individuals except for Brother Kiev. Could you tell us who Brother Kiev was? Response. Brother Kiel was His Excellency Son Sen, not Mr. Kiel Sampan. I understand. Thank you. Now, I just want to see if we can identify the, uh, the area from which the document comes. The beginning of the telegram states presented with respect to beloved and missed brother Paul and then below that as follows according to the report of comrade Chuk sector 24 on the border situation and then it goes on to describe certain events which took place on the 13th of March 1976 uh, does that information help you identify where the telegram originated. Response. The heading of the telegram stated very clearly already that to beloved and Mr. Brother Paul, which was he referred to Paul Pot, and with regard to the report uh, prepared by Comrade uh, Chuk, I don't know who Chuk uh, was, but Sector Twenty Four was under the East Zone, so this message was sent to Paul Pot, and the person who prepared the telegram was the, the person by the name Chon. So this person could have been from the East uh, as seen on other documents uh, from the East. Thank you. Um, and as we look at the paragraph starts starting with number two, I'll just read a part of it. As for the grenade throwing situation, And then a little bit further down, we have now captured the guy who threw the grenade. This guy was a pacification agent. Then a little bit further down, in addition, we beat him up during interrogation about his organizational links and got on to more than 20 more of them in the grassroots of Prayer Stick District. These guys' organizational links come from South Vietnam. Do you recall um, whether you uh, translated this, this particular telegram? Do you recall these words? Response. I did not uh, decode uh, these telegram and I was not tasked uh, with dealing with these telegrams because when it comes to the East and when it comes to the situation along the Vietnamese and Cambodian border Pon would uh, be in charge of handling this and I was not involved thank you and do you recall from the telegrams that you that you did uh, decode? Um, do you recall whether there were similar uh, instances of 
interrogations having taken place in the regions and information being sent to the centre. Response. As I already emphasized earlier on, the reports on the internal matters, including the traitors, I had received very little messages, none. So I would not wish to elaborate on this because I'm myself not uh, clear and I had no experience dealing with this myself. Thank you. Looking at the, the form of the telegram and noting you didn't translate this particular one, does it appear to you consistent with other telegrams that were being sent in at the time. So just looking at the form, not the content. Response. The form, I mean the heading and the ending looked uh, similar, however the content of the report uh, would not be the same because normally they would uh, list down the report like with bullet points A, B, C and there was no proper format or template that people had to follow in uniform. So the report was based on the practical situation uh, or information they obtained from the field. Sometimes they would talk about political issues before the military ones and it depends on people who prepare the telegrams. Thank you. Now, moving on to another telegram. Uh, this is document E3-874. And it is another telegram, Your Honours, dated 18th of July, 1976. With your leave, I will give the witness a hard copy. The President, you may proceed. Court officer is now instructed to take the document uh, from Mr. Kuprasik Shura and have uh, it handed to the witness for examination. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Sopang, looking at this document, um, again, it appears to start with a telegram number, 50. Um, it is addressed to dear, beloved, and missed brothers. And in the first line, it discusses a situation as follows. The situation on July 11 at 14 o'clock, the region's soldiers who were guarding Prayer Vihya Temple took eight AKs and two B-40s with them and deserted to Thailand. It's a, it's a long document, so I'm not going to um, read all of it. Um, I want to really see whether you're able to recognize uh, again where the document originates um, so if we can if we turn to the to the end of the document to Mr. Sapang um, and this is at Khmer ERN 00003704 
French 00623913 and English 00003706. Final point three there indicates Ravine, Ravine District has fairly much rain. And it is then signed with warmest revolutionary respect, July 18, 1976, Hong. Are you able to identify the, the author of this document, Mr. Sapang? Response. Yes, I am. Hong was the sector secretary. He was the one who sent me to the education session. I already said uh, at the beginning before the investigators that I did not know uh, who he was, although he sent me. Thank you. I just wanted to see whether that was the same individual that you, uh, that you have described and you have now confirmed that. Uh, for the record, this was also copied to Brother Norn, Brother Q, Brother Van, Office and Documentation. Moving on to another document, Mr. Sapang. This is E3 slash 1023. Mr. President, I have a hard copy for the witness. With your leave, I'll, I'll hand it to him. E3 slash 1023. The President, you may proceed. Court officer, you are now instructed to take the hard copy and hand it over to the witness. Looking at this document, Mr. Sopang, it starts with telegram number 11, radio band 271. It's discussing events which took place in September 1976, and it's signed also by Chon, which could be the same individual we saw earlier. The opening line says, respectfully sent to beloved and missed M870. Are you able to tell us what that designation M870 refers to? Is it the same committee 870 or office 870 that we were discussing earlier? Response. M, as you already read, uh, it refers to office. It is correct. Um, eight seven T is similar to office eight seven T. It refers to the the central committee. Even the term Anka 870 is or was uh, interchangeably used to refer to M870 or to Office 870 or to just 870, which was then the center. So do I understand correctly that all of those various designations, Anka 870, M870, are a reference to the Central Committee, as you understood it. Response. 
That's my understanding. Yes. I want to look at the, the content of this telegram for a brief moment um, and see if you're able to assist us. If you're not, uh, please tell us so. It says the following. We would like to report on the situation at the boundary of Sector 23 as follows. At 8.30 a.m. on 4 September 1976, the enemy dropped an audio recording device down at Samrong Tme village, Tools Day sub-district, Chantria district. When it arrived on the earth, it produced constant white noise. At that time, the cattle guarding children picked it up and disconnected electric wire until no more noise existed. This appears to be discussing a relatively minor event, um, at least on the face of it, um, but my question is, was it, was it common for zones to be reporting um, a wide range of events, such as an audio recording device falling out of the sky and being discovered by some children? Response. Whatever strange situation at verse concerning security concern or safety and also the situation at the border areas report uh, would have to be filed to the upper echelon. Thank you. And moving right along to another document um, and we're Moving forward in time, Your Honours, and um, we don't have uh, many more, but I wish to um, show them to the witness. This is E3-882, another telegram dated 4 August 1977. With your leave, I have a hard copy for the witness. The President, you may proceed and court officer is now instructed to bring the document to the witness. Mr. Sopang, as you familiarize yourself with the document, um, I'll indicate for the record that we only have a partial translation in English um, and I think a complete translation in French. Um, so what I will do is attempt to summarize or read from a draft translation that we have in English and uh, I want to see if you can confirm whether or not um, the contents I'm reading are, are correct, Mr. Sopang. So the document starts with 4 August 1977, telegram 62, band 1474, and it is entitled to respectfully presented to respected and beloved MO81. Are you familiar with this particular code, Mr. Sopang? MO81. I did not see M81. If it was M87, it could mean I'm 870, but I never saw anyone using this M81. 
and that number did not exist. It should be M87 because I saw that there, there was some kind of a removal on that number. And if it were to be M87, it denotes that it is a short form of M870. President, Mr. Witness, please respond appropriately to the questions. If you know, please state so. If you don't, also state so. And try not to respond by providing your personal conclusion. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, uh, But uh, some witness, let me provide my response that I did not know because I never saw this number before. Thank you. Um, for the record, I'll uh, indicate that the document is copied to Uncle, Uncle Norn, Brother Van, Brother Vaughan, Brother Q, office and documentation. Uh, Mr. President, if I may, for one second. Uh, I don't see the purpose in mentioning anything for the record. The gentleman indicated that he didn't know. Time to move on. What is the purpose other than perhaps to signal something to the witness or to try to give them some information that he didn't have. There's no reason to put it in the record. It's in the record already. It's part of the file. What is the purpose? Councilman, thank you, Mr. President. I fully support the objection raised by Council Michael Canavas. I also object to the additional statement made by the prosecutor and that means uh, it is equivalent to the conclusion and that should be made at the end of the hearing. Your Honours, um, one of the reasons I do this is because documents are available in three languages. Uh, we can't project all of them on the screen at the same time. Um, I'm simply doing this to uh, contextualize the document. Um, I'm certainly not adding anything. I'm simply reading from the document. Um, I, I don't see any uh, improper purpose to it. Um, if anything, it assists the chamber in understanding uh, the, the nature of the document and who the people uh, and who it names. Um, I'm in your hands, uh, Mr. President. I'm happy to, uh, to not read out the recipients. I just think it saves time um, and it makes the relevance of a document more obvious. Hello. President. Uh, Mr. Prosecutor, you may continue with your questioning as the document is part of the case file. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, there is a brief reference here, Mr. Sopang, in paragraph B, and that appears on the first page of the document in all three languages. It states, recently there is also news that B, the Kampuchean army, has committed mass killings of 1,000 ordinary Vietnamese people at Ha Tien in Kieng Jieng province, full stop. Do you recall from, in your experience uh, in, in translating these telegrams, 
Um, do you recall reading similar reports uh, in relation to the conflict with Vietnam? No, I did not know that. I never encoded uh, that document, and I never saw that document. So I reserve my rights not uh, to speak about that document, which I did not know. Thank you. And just one last question on that document. Um, the author at the very end is an individual called Chien. Uh, do you know who that individual was, Chien? No, I did not. Thank you. Now, moving on to another category of document which you've discussed with the co-investigating judges. This is document D200-9, Point five, and it is a, it is an instruction, of Office, eight seventy, dated the third of January nineteen seventy eight. I have a hard copy for the witness. Yes, you may proceed, court officer. Could you deliver the the document, for the witness examination? If I can ask you to uh, look at the, the the heading of that document, as I indicated earlier, instruction of Office 870, subject, points of view, stance, and ways of defeating the Yuan invaders. And then the document has a number of uh, subheadings. If we can show that on the screen, um, Mr. Sopang, you can see that the document has a number of handwritten annotations in it. Um, in your second interview, when you looked at those annotations, you, you said the following. This is document E3-67, Khmer ERN. 00294544 French ERN 00374939 and English 00483972 you said the following I know this handwriting it was Pol Pot's because he had the right to make corrections. corrections. These red letters were in Pol Pot's own handwriting. I can remember because I used to see the handwriting of Pol Pot, which were brought to me by Pon for translation, or when he personally wrote short messages and sent them through Pon to me for translation just want to confirm that that's an accurate summary of your statement. But yes, that is correct. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to read from the document. It, it speaks for itself. But I want to look at one section towards the end. And this is that we're on document D200-9.5, 
Khmer ERN 00381222, -222. French ERN 00754715, -00 and English 00707. 388. The document states, note, this instruction must be distributed and learned again and again within the party committee of zones, sectors, districts, cooperatives, battlefield committees, division committees, regiments, battalions, platoons, companies, groups, and combatants, and each target commanding committee, so as to exchange experience and improve the performance regularly. And then further down, the document is signed by committee of 870. Mr. Sopang, do you recall instructions such as this one uh, being issued by a committee of 870 and directed to all zones, sectors and committees throughout the country. Yes, I recall that uh, there was this kind of document However, it was not in a corrected version that is shown here. It was already a final version that I saw back then. Thank you, prosecution. Thank you, witness. The time is appropriate for a short break. We will take a break for 20 minutes and resume at 3 p.m. Court officer, could you assist the witness during the break? and have him return to the courtroom at 3 p.m.